So we will now prove the Lagrange's theorem. So let G be a finite group and H be a subgroup of G. Then order of H divides order of g okay so if h is a finite group so this remember that this theorem is uh, applicable only to which group it is applicable to only finite groups so if g is finite and if h is a subgroup of g then order of h must be a divisor of order of g so we will now prove it it's uh, very easy to prove because all the required preliminaries we have already covered right so let the cosets of H in G be as follows. So this H will give rise to cosets. So what are the cosets? So right, the first coset is H. The next coset is a different coset which is A star H, B star H and so on okay now how many cosets are there that we don't know now uh, then so let us assume that the number of uh, cosets the number of cosets are suppose uh, k number of cosets okay so let uh, the number of cosets the number of cosets be k So the picture says that this in this group G H is a subgroup and these are the cosets A star H and so on and how many cosets are we having we are having K cosets K number of cosets I will now further assume that the order of this group the order of this group is n so let the order of group be equal to n and the order of subgroup i'm going to assume to be m now what we want to prove is we want to prove that order of h divides order of g so we actually want to prove that m divides n because order of H is M and order of G is N. So we want to prove that M divides N. Now we will, we know that these uh, cosets which are formed above H, A star H, V star H, they are all disjoint from each other and their union is equal to what? Their union is equal to full G. So since G can be written as a disjoint union so for disjoint union i'm going to use this notation a star h then b star h these are the disjoint cosets and how many such cosets are there how many cosets do we have in all we have k cosets so these are all k terms in this union right now if a g can be now if i try to calculate the order of g Right. this is a disjoint union so the number of elements in g is same as number of elements in h plus the number of elements in the coset a star h plus the number of elements in coset b star h and so on right and how many terms are there in this addition there are k terms in this addition again okay. correct so what is order of g now uh, we know that order of g is n which is equal to what is order of H? Order of H we have assumed M plus. What is order of A plus? The order of A plus H is also equal to M because we know that uh, any two cosets have what? Any two cosets have same number of uh, elements, right? So the, or the, the coset A star H will also have uh, M elements and all the cosets have the same number of elements. That is also we have proved in the earlier class. So we will have M plus M plus M plus M. How many times will this occur? 
this is uh, occurring k time k times so this means that n can be written is equal to what m times k where k is also natural number m is also natural number n is also natural because they are all orders right they cannot be negative so they all are all are all are positive natural numbers so this means that uh, this that m actually divides what m divides in but m is a divisor of n this means that order of h actually divides order of g so this completes the proof of the lagrange theorem so now let us take a simple problem let g be a group of order 24 what can be possible orders of subgroups of g subgroups of g okay now if h is a subgroup of g then and we know that g is finite why g is finite because order of g is how much order of g is 24 so g is finite so now i can immediately apply what i can apply lagrange's theorem so by lagrange's theorem i can say that order of h must divide order of g this means that order of h must divide 24 order of h sorry order of h must be 24 and what are the divisors of 24 so this means order of h can be either 1 2 3 4 i'm writing all the divisors of 24 okay so order of h can be 1 2 3 4 6 8 12, 24 okay so this means if you take a group of order 24 then it does not have then it does not have a subgroup of order say 10 okay it cannot have a subgroup of order 10 why because 10 does not divide what because 10 does not divide 24 okay so look at the th statement of the theorem carefully it says that if, if g is finite and if h is a subgroup then order of h divides order of g so the possible orders can be 1 2 3 4 so in a group of order 24 you if even if if you get a subgroup in this group that subgroup must have one of these orders okay so don't take the wrong conclusion from this so often people make a mistake from this is that what people say is that since uh, since 6 divides 24 now we all know that 6 divides 24 then uh, don't try to make this wrong conclusion that therefore this group g must have a subgroup of order 6 okay that is not correct must have a subgroup of order 6 okay it is not this is not correct okay what is lagrange's theorem saying if it has a subgroup then it its order can be 6 okay it doesn't say that if you take any divisor of 24 then you will always get a subgroup you may not get a subgroup of order 6 it is not compulsory that uh, you must get a subgroup of order 6 this is not told by lagrange's theorem okay i am repeating if this if a subgroup is there then its order can be 6 yes but if 6 is divisor of 24 it is not necessarily it is not necessary that you will get the subgroup of order 6 in that in in a given group okay in the coming few in the coming lectures we are going to see that the converse of lagrange's theorem is not true okay we are going to find a group and we are going to find a uh, find a divisor of that group 
and we will show that though the number is divisor of the order of the group in that group you cannot find any subgroup of that given order okay for example uh, for example if i give you order of g is equal to say suppose 12 okay we will show that if even if 6 divide 12 we all know that 6 divides 12 we will try to show that in this group there is no subgroup you cannot find a subgroup whose order is 6 so this is the converse of lagrange's theorem under some conditions converse of lagrange's theorem is also true if you take a group with some special properties which we will explore later if you take a group with some special properties and if you take any divisor of the order of group okay then you will always get a subgroup so that is the converse of sub of lagrange's theorem and that converse will be true only if the group has some special properties if the group does not have that special property then the converse of lagrange's theorem need not be true okay 